my overall portfolio looks something like um uh, 63% in equity 30% in debt 5% in cash uh keeping some aside for some uh, impending uh, expenditure and uh, about 2% in uh, real estate and within equities is it stocks or is it funds it's predominantly funds a uh, little bit of etfs here and there but mostly uh, it's funds i would say more than 92 to 95% funds uh, about 5 to 6% in uh, stocks i have practically zero investments in gold and uh, my bond investments are held through this debt pms that i uh, spoke about i don't do direct bonds i don't do uh, much de- bank deposits or anything like that either uh, all my investments are uh, either equity mutual funds or debt mutual funds or equity pms or debt pms public provident fund mm, not really no no never felt the need for that just think over it Today I'm speaking to Shikant Minakshi, uh, who was co-founder of Funds India, and uh, is currently co-founder of Prime Investor, and has probably shaped India's mutual fund ecosystem more than most other people I know. Um, Shikant, welcome. Thank you, Neil. Thanks. Sir. So, Shikant, today we'll discuss how you invest, um, and we'll start with the broad asset allocation. So, your today's portfolio, how is it structured? uh my overall portfolio i i, I looked it up uh, last night uh, preparing for this my overall portfolio looks something like um 63% in equity 30% in debt 5% in cash uh keeping some aside for some uh, impending uh, expenditure and uh, about 2% in uh, real estate so that's my uh, allocation right now i try to keep it to overall 60 40 but it slips and slides here and there i don't do too much tinkering with my portfolio even if it's a little uh, you know uh, uh, not exactly 60 40 i let it be for some time before i actually do anything about it so that's my allocation right so in the past year you would have seen a surge in your equity component definitely that's that shows yeah did you rebalance uh, not yet i usually wait um, i it's mostly inertia actually but uh, I usually wait for it to get really bad, like 65, 66% in equity, and uh, um, also to wait to see if I have uh, any specific uh, need uh, that I uh, or or reason for me to uh, do a rebalancing and then uh, do a rebalancing. So far, it's okay. So I've not touched my portfolio yet. And within equities, is it stocks or is it funds? It's predominantly funds. A uh, little bit of ETFs here and there, but. mostly uh, it's funds i would say more than 92 to 95% funds uh, about 5 to 6% in uh, stocks um one caveat though is that you know recently i started investing in a pms which i you know i mean technically speaking that's direct stock uh, uh, holding but uh, since i am not managing it myself to me that is as good as investing in a, a mutual fund so i'm putting that into the mutual fund bucket when i uh talk about it but uh, mutual fund when in my mind i mean when i say mutual fund it includes classic mutual funds and classic etfs and uh, since recently pms so shikant what made you invest in pms and which pms did you pick uh well, which pms i uh, picked i mean that's an easy answer i went with the local pms uh, here in chennai uh, unify uh, pms which is a very well known uh, uh, pms across the country and the reason i chose a pms i mean uh, i may have wanted to stay with mutual funds uh, all through but i have a specific situation that uh, made me choose a pms i also paid taxes in the uh, us as uh, part of my portfolio is in us as well and uh, because of that i cannot hold a significant amount of mutual funds in uh, my name uh, in india because of something called pfic uh, uh, rules so but direct stock ownership is a different uh, ball game and since pms translates to direct stock ownership in my name in the dmat account i can invest in pms and that will be subject to uh, a differential tax treatment in uh, us that's the reason why i went with pms yeah yeah because us has uh, citizenship based taxation and not residence based correct taxation correct. in fact even parag parik uh, in their one of their agms mentioned this they still have the pms going for mm-hmm. us and sure. completely understand yeah. okay um so within the your but still funds are a very large absolutely i mean i 
I invest both in my uh, wife's name and uh, uh, my daughter's name as well as a little bit in my my name when it comes to mutual funds. So how many mutual funds do you have? About 95% or more of my uh, mutual fund assets will be in about 10 to 12 uh, funds. Mm. The remaining 5% will be scattered across another 8 to 10 funds. Understood. And these you mean for equity, I'm assuming? Uh, no, both equity and uh, debt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Across. across. Uh, so the 33% debt. or debt in, in is predominantly these funds, the debt funds. Correct. Correct. And I've also invested in a debt PMS. There are PMSs that do debt instruments alone. I see. Um, I have invested in one such uh, PMS as well. Apart from this, uh, is there anything else you do, direct bonds or gold uh, that you have? No, I have practically zero investments in gold and uh, my bond investments are held through this debt PMS that I uh, spoke about. I don't do direct bonds. I don't do uh, much de bank deposits or anything like that either. Uh, all my investments are uh, either equity mutual funds or debt mutual funds or equity PMS or debt PMS. Public provident fund? Mm, not really. No. no, no. Never felt the need for that. Just didn't go for it. So you mentioned a small real estate allocation, 2%. Yeah. Yeah. How did that come about? <laughs> that came about um, during the peak of uh, the, you know, early 2000s uh, real estate uh, mania. Everybody was buying. I was in US at that time. And everyone in my neighborhood in the US was buying a piece in India. So I joined a gang and uh, bought a piece. And that's still lying around. I will eventually, you know, move out of it. And, uh, Do you get rent from it or? No, it's a piece of land. Tell me a bit about your career. When did you start Funds India? What made you think of the idea and how did it evolve after that? Well, um, we started Funds India in 2008-9 time period. Uh, the uh, platform went live in uh, 2009. Uh, me and Chandra, Chandra Shekhar, uh, we uh, were uh, co-founders of uh, Funds India. Um, I had just moved back from uh, US where I had worked in financial services industry, um, especially uh, uh, a very pioneering broker uh, in, uh, you know, broking platform in uh, US. So I had a lot of interest in um, retail financial services um, and uh, especially on the investment domain. And uh, in India, what we found was um, the mutual fund market at that time, even today, to a much smaller degree, but at that time, to a much larger degree, it was a very fragmented market, right? It was predominantly, I mean, it was dominated by the distribution uh, channel and, uh, you know, individual distributors, uh, distributors and uh, the corporate presence was very uh, thin. And at that time, fintech, fintech as a phrase wasn't even uh, on back then, but, the, uh, uh, but as a concept, it was emerging uh, in India. And that was something that was in our wheelhouse. I mean, that was something that both me and Chandra, we were very comfortable with. And um, so one thing led to another. And uh, we started uh, uh, Funds India as a mutual fund a specific uh, platform, retail platform for mutual fund investors in India. Um, and we grew from there. We started offering stocks and, uh, you know, uh, deposits and things like that since then. But even till date, it remains a a uh, very mutual fund specialized platform uh, in the country and one of the, uh, if I may say so myself, one of the best uh, user experience for mutual fund investors in the country. And uh, you moved on from there in 2018 or 19? 19, 19. 19. So what prompted that decision? Uh, there were um, events uh, um, in Funds India that uh, led to my uh, departure, both me and Chandra, our departure from Funds India. Uh, most of it were not uh, uh, you know, pleasant events, but um, at the same time, it was um, it was time that Funds India moved on to a, a different stage in its uh, uh, corporate life cycle, and uh, we had done our part and we moved on. And uh, uh, Chandra is doing his own thing, and I'm doing Prime Investor right now. Now, can you talk us through Prime Investor? Uh... Yeah. So when uh, we came out of Funds India. Um, the idea, uh, the, the, the the knowledge kernel of, uh, you know, what we had in Funds India in terms of our research uh, capabilities, um, we, we moved out uh, as a whole. And uh, me, Vidya and Bhavna, Vidya and Bhavna were uh, the, the uh, you know, were leading the uh, research team in Funds India. And when we moved out, we wanted to do something together. And um, we thought of this idea where 
we would provide research as a service to retail investors i mean we wanted to keep our focus on retail investors we wanted to keep our focus on helping investors invest properly in the market now we didn't want to you know reinvent the wheel and do um, create a, another transaction platform all that stuff i mean that we had already done that we didn't want to do that again uh, but what we wanted to do was create a platform where people can come and get the best researched recommendations for all the investments there were uh, there was a plethora of uh, uh, investment platforms that were uh, around by then you know direct uh, uh, route investment platforms as well into mutual funds and what we wanted to do was all these platforms were giving execution capabilities to investors but who is telling them how to invest where to invest what the good products are nobody was right so we want to fill that gap and be a completely independent unbiased and uh, you know high quality research platform a uh, service for providing recommendations across financial products for customers in india for investors in india so that was the uh, genesis and that's what we are that's what we've been iterating on over the last 4 5 years now so the core of it is that you provide research on mutual funds uh we right now we provide research on many financial products including mutual funds etfs and stocks and bonds and uh, uh, even deposits and even you know term insurance and health insurance we want to be like a one stop shop for uh, many financial products uh, for an investor but you don't manage portfolios so we or... don't manage portfolios we don't do transactions when you think of the landscape today with fintechs and all these online platforms dominating retail flows and the way they sort funds on one year basis three year basis what goes through your mind that's an interesting question because multiple things go through my mind at that point where when i when i say that what i mean is you know i know uh, the message that goes from the financial services uh, industry uh, to the financial services marketplace is often very muddled some many times misleading uh, uh, message and and many times it is it's a very straightforward message for example re- recently a mutual fund advised um, uh, um, had in its uh, advertisement right you know until you can pick the right mutual fund invest in an index fund you know it's, it's a good message it's a good message that, that goes to the market but like you said you know there are many many a times where um where uh, where 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 a misleading ad or you know very uh, enticing ad that conveys a wrong picture goes to the market as well that tells me the industry knows what attracts the eyeballs what attracts the attention what attracts the money from the market to a certain extent um both parties here you know both the industry and the market are to be uh, quote and quote blamed uh, for that and um, the reason is you know i talk to a lot of investors a lot of potential investors a lot of uh, people seeking advice people seeking recommendations uh, directly you know I, i have in the last 15 years and i know how they think you know i and i know what they seek and i know what tempts them it's not the fault of the industry i mean you, if you take for example the mutual fund industry it is inherently mutual fund as a as an instrument is one where you cannot predict returns at any level even if you have an overnight fund the least risky fund right you cannot say what you will be returning in one week you cannot even predict that right you cannot even forecast that or present that or anything like that and there is a a uh, regulated uncertainty about returns in the mutual mutual fund industry right but the market wants certainty demands certainty demands some kind of assurance right there is a there is a gulf here between the expectation of the market and what the industry can provide and often time this gulf is bridged by vague statements vague statements that can escape regulatory scrutiny on one side but reassure investors on the uh, other side this is these are i'm i'm talking about you know honest brokers you know people who are trying to do the right thing of course there are lots of people who are even trying i mean i mean you know uh, how many you know uh, uh, bad actors there are in the uh, i wouldn't call it i wouldn't they are they are 
extra industry bad actor um who try to you know spindle money practically from the uh, market and there is a market for them to you know there is an audience for them to there are people who will willingly uh, fall for those and then cry horse about how they got uh, duped and all that stuff so it's that it's a it's a, it's a, it's an evolving situation i think the situation today is much better than it was when i started pans india say 15 years back but um, it's still an evolving situation if you think of your portfolio returns over the past let's say 15 years what kind of returns would you have gotten oh i can tell you um almost exactly um it uh, my my uh, 70 30 mutual fund uh, portfolio has returned between 13 to 15% consistently cagr mm-hmm. over the last uh, 15 years right which is you know i have had the best uh, you know research minds in mutual funds helping me put together this portfolio but nevertheless it has done quite well for itself yeah the 70 30 being equity debt equity debt yeah, yeah and you haven't really changed that's been your that's uh, more more or less been my uh, allocation okay how are you with insurance um i have um i have a health insurance i have a top up um, uh, health insurance uh, as well and um i had till recently i had a term insurance i recently cancelled my term insurance and why is that i, um, I have sufficient assets to not require the insurance right and for health uh, what kind of policy do you have or how much do you cover i i my basic policy covers 10 lakhs and my top up policy covers 25 lakhs your entire family or entire family float yes you uh, began with stocks and you mentioned me earlier that you had some accidents with them yeah so i mean my very first first investment that i can remember i, I think that was my first investment ever was in um, 98 if i remember uh, correct i had just uh, started uh, making money i mean i had just started saving some money and i had saved about 5000 dollars i think i was in us back then and uh, my first stock investment was a great investment intc intel intel corporation ha ha i bought it around I'm, uh, at that time around 51 dollars and i sold it at 53 dollars ha okay Very of soon. course, yeah. Had I held it uh, until today, it would have been close to like hundred thousand dollars or something like that. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it's neither here nor there. But I, I would definitely not have held it uh, till today. The thing is, I've had a very uh, uh, unfortunate, but also I think a typical experience with uh, stock picking and direct stock uh, investing, right? Year two thousand after the dot com crash. right it was not prior to the dot com crash before during the uh, you know uh, hype and all that stuff i was working in a company i was a technical guy i was doing software stuff and all that stuff we were using a server side software okay uh, i don't know where what the company does today um, uh, right now but you know it was called the, the server side software the geeks in the audience might be familiar with this it was called web logic okay and it was uh, by a company called bea software Okay, that server-side software was ubiquitous at that time, right? I mean, uh, every company, every enterprise that I knew of was using WebLogic as the middleware, having Oracle in the back end and uh, you know basic HTML and JavaScript in the front end. Okay, so I was so enamored by this thing, by this software and uh, this this company, I went and bought the stock, hmm. right? I mean, I had. just read like a couple of years back uh, mm-hmm. peter lynch uh, you know where he says you know you should invest in stuff that you know about that you are positive about and all that stuff one upon wall street right so i bought that two years the stock crashed completely extraneous factors it had nothing the the server software is still being used but that company's finances were so poorly being managed that the stock crashed as a software engineer i had no ability to either look at its financials or to even monitor how the company is doing you know financially how they were managing their financials how was how their corporate governance was and all that stuff right i just went unidimensionally thinking that you know this is a great software this is so popular so many people are using it i like it so let me buy the company right so even when you have a reasonably good idea as to what you're doing things might not go 
your way when it comes to a uh, uh, stock picking uh, enterprise right uh, effort i mean the the few times where i was um successful with stock picking it was the the sum of money was too small to matter the magnitude of gain was too small to matter because of that and it was it had nothing to do with my own ability it was just you know it was just luck right and um, the only time i did well with stocks was when you know i had a team of uh, researchers and they gave me a, a portfolio of like 10 stocks mm-hmm. and say you know invest in these 10 stocks that 10 stocks has over a period of time given me around uh, 12 13% cagr that even there it's not like great or anything like that i mean i could have gotten same or better from a uh, from a mutual fund right so e- even in the best of situations that was my cagr and i i lost significantly uh, i mean not relative to my overall uh, uh, you know uh, net worth but still a significant amount of uh, money in my own eyes by picking stocks directly even as recently as a couple of years back during the ipo mania right 2021 um, not uh, three years back during the ipo mania i tried my hardest to stay away but please don't name the company i won't name the company there was one company a chennai saas company that went ipo in us it was so tempting i invested and you can all guess the name of the company and you know how that company is doing right now so even when you know that you're doing the best effort when it comes to stock picking you can go terribly wrong when it when it comes to valuation when it comes to corporate governance things that are um that are not that that are not directly visible to you or things that are very hard to keep uh, track of over a period of time so i've not had ter- terrible success with uh, uh, direct stock picking and because of that i the only lesson that i've learned is you know to know that i'm not good at stock picking so stay with have like a pyramid structure your base is going to be uh, mutual funds and etfs and bonds and all that stuff and as a as a allocated portfolio is going to be the bulk of the bottom of the pyramid maybe on top you can have a little bit of uh, stocks to keep you excited keep you interested keep you you know looking at the markets whenever you want that has been my uh, lesson from the market do you try your hand in refundo as well ah uh, no thankfully not that i mean it was pretty uh, clear to me that you know if i'm not good at stock picking i'm definitely not going to be good at that fair enough shikant thank you so much for your time it was lovely speaking absolutely thank you i appreciate it thank you